Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and today we have a guide for my favorite unit in Dota Underlords, Legion Commander. In this guide, we'll cover the basics of this archetype, the general strategy, specific unit choices, Underlord and item decisions, as well as positioning considerations. Before we get into the strategy, let's clarify exactly how Legion Commander works for newer players who may not fully understand her. She will gain all alliance benefits that you have active, thanks to the Champion Alliance, as well as increasing her own damage and health per unique alliance active. This means that you want to have lots of different alliances active, rather than just a few alliances completed to the highest tier. She does not contribute any additional units to the alliance though, so if you have say three other knights, she will not count as a fourth knight to trigger that higher tier of that alliance. She has several abilities, but the most important one is her baseline ability, Duel. When cast, she will force the lowest health adjacent unit to attack her, and if either Legion Commander or her Duel opponent die during the duration, the surviving unit will gain permanently increased damage for the rest of the game. Ideally, Legion Commander wins these duels and ramps up her damage over time until she becomes absolutely unstoppable in the late game. The other two abilities are specific on certain alliances. Elemental Charge is used for the Spirit Alliance, and Will of the Bull Snake is unlocked by the Dragon Alliance. Because Legion Commander synergizes with every other alliance in the game, these builds are going to be very different from other strategies you may have used before. Rather than having a set build path or core units, you are exceptionally flexible at every point in the game, and the optimal build path is highly dependent on what units you have available. Other than Legion Commander, there are no absolutely required units to make the build work, so there are lots of alternatives if certain units are highly contested. The main focus of these builds, regardless of how they are constructed, is to get Legion Commander to win early duels to ramp up her damage, which will ensure she'll win even more duels in the mid game and then let her wreak havoc on enemies come the late game. To do this, the most important thing is to get her going early. If you cannot find a 2-star Legion Commander in, say, the first 10 rounds, this build is probably not a great idea, since she'll be behind in damage and then never really be able to carry your team. In this case, it's often best to transition to a different build and then just cut the Legion Commander entirely if she's not pulling her weight. In general, most Legion Commander builds will consist of many two-unit alliances like Brutes, Warlocks, or Knights, rather than the three-unit alliances like Assassins, Warriors, or Healers. Simply put, you can fit more two-unit alliances into a build as opposed to three-unit alliances. Many of the three-unit alliances are also currently balanced in such a way that they encourage going for the full six units in the same alliance, which obviously leaves even less space for other alliances to buff up the Legion Commander. Let's talk about some of the ideal alliances and units that are often included. Other than the, than the first one though, there are no particular order to these lists. First up, we've got Demon Alliance, and this is probably the most important alliance to pair up with Legion Commander. This will dramatically increase her damage during a duel, which will let her gain even more duel damage since she'll be winning them more consistently, which then lets her win more duels down the line, and then it's just a great feedback loop there. Queen of Pain and Terrorblade are probably the least appealing demons since their secondary alliances, Assassins and Hunters, require three units to complete. All other demons have secondary alliances which only require two units, so they're going to be the preferred choice. Try not to overload on too many demons though, or else Legion Commander will be silenced for too long and possibly never duel. Typically, I use at most two other demons. Another important alliance is the Druid Alliance, especially in the early game. Druids allow you to possibly get an upgraded star level on Legion Commander, meaning a higher reward for winning duels. All of the Druids have very easy to complete secondary alliances, and Legion Commander is a great tether target for Io. The Brute Alliance is also very potent in the early game, and is still quite effective later on against opposing assassins. It will make Legion Commander swap targets to apply the debuff, but when she duels, she'll focus, on the, focus down the single target that she has dueled. Since Treant Protector and Doom are both such strong individual units and have other valuable alliances like Demon and Druid, Brutes tend to make it into most Legion Commander builds come the late game. In the early game though, you really want to be getting brawny kills going if possible. Legion Commander's kills do count towards the brawny alliance, but only the kills that she gets while the alliance is active. If you do manage to get lots of brawny kills early on, this can scale very well with the Champion Alliance, but if you cannot activate this until later in the game, it's generally not going to be a worthwhile alliance. Warlocks are a very good pairing with Legion Commander, since she'll be dealing lots of damage during the duel, thanks to the Demon Alliance, which will also then cause lots of healing. 
All of the Warlocks also offer very valuable secondary alliances to pair up with, such as Trolls, Brawnies, or Demons. You'll generally want some level of healing in your build, so if you don't have Warlocks, consider going for Dragons for a similar effect. Now, Dragons are very strong individual units, but other than Dragon Knight, they don't really provide very valuable secondary alliances. They can allow a Legion Commander to heal herself via Will of the Bullsnake, but generally Warlocks do a much better job of healing, so I tend to avoid Dragons. Next up we've got Bloodbound, and this alliance is only really valuable if you have a big time contract item, since otherwise you'd have to include too many low impact units to activate it and make it worthwhile. Legion Commander does not need to hold the big time contract to gain the benefits, and if you can put it on somebody else, then you'll essentially have three Bloodbounds, the real Bloodbound plus the big time contract plus the Legion Commander, but you can put the big time contract on Legion Commander herself, which will then ensure you just have two Bloodbound, and when the first one dies, the benefit will automatically go to Legion Commander. You kind of trade a higher ceiling for a bit more consistency in getting her that bonus damage right away. Once again, I would avoid playing this if you don't have a big time contract item. Next up, the human buff does not really offer too terribly much in terms of combat benefit, but it's easy to complete since you already have a Legion Commander who is a human. These three options here, Lycan, Dragon Knight, and Sven, all have two other valuable alliances, so you can look to fit them in later in the game for more Legion Commander scaling. The Savage bonus is deceptively strong on Legion Commander. Every auto attack will increase her attack damage, but then that increase is then modified by the Champion Alliance, that Champion Alliance scaling, allowing her to ramp up her damage very, very quickly. And a lot of them also have very valuable secondary alliances, such as Lone Druid in Druids or Bristleback in Brawnies. The Insect Alliance is very strong in the early game, but it's rather lackluster at the later stages of the game. Both Broodmother and Sand King are pretty strong units with other valuable alliances, the Warlock and Savages, so it might be worthwhile, but I generally will avoid playing Insects when paired with Legion Commander. Trolls. Now, these two trolls, Witch Doctor and Shadow Shaman, are very accessible in the early game and give great secondary alliances, Druid and Warlock and they will give Legion Commander a massive attack speed increase. Despite being early game units, they're still really good in the late game just because the Troll Alliance scales so well with your board in the late game that bonus attack speed once everyone is ramping up is just so valuable and I really like Trolls very often in this kind of build. Deadeye Alliance. Now this is an alliance I actually tend to avoid with Legion Commander. If you do activate this alliance, Legion Commander will spend a lot of her time walking around to try to find the lowest health opposing target, rather than just killing the opponent who's right in front of her. It leads to a lot of wasted time that you don't really see on Gyrocopter, Sniper, or Bloodseeker since they either have unlimited range with Sniper and Gyrocopter, or Bloodseeker who just has ridiculously fast movement speed. Legion Commander has neither of those, so she's going to waste a lot of time, and in general I feel like this alliance is actually a net negative effect for this build, so I avoid Deadeye if possible. And the Spirit Alliance is pretty lackluster at the moment, at least in terms of its current balancing and place in the meta. Legion Commander does count as a Spirit and can be part of a Delta Slam, as discussed before, with her Elemental Charge ability, but it's really not that great of a use on her, since she'd rather be auto-attacking rather than spend a few seconds out of combat to do a Delta Slam. If Spirits do get buffed and become more of a meta build, then Legion Commander could easily fit in, but the, at the moment I do avoid this Alliance. Any other alliances that I haven't really mentioned here, like say Heartless, Scrappy, or Inventor, are generally going to be lackluster with Legion Commander. They either don't really increase her combat power enough, or the units don't really have valuable alliances that fit in with others in order to make a coherent build. Next up, let's talk about the Underlord choice. Anesix, in either her healing support or damage support form, is almost always the choice for a Legion Commander build. Her Demon Companion that she summons counts towards the number of demons for the Demon Alliance, meaning that Legion Commander will gain an additional plus 50% more pure or bonus pure damage during a duel compared to using any other Underlord. There are some cases where maybe you might want, say, support damage dealer Hobgen. He's also pretty reasonable since his attack speed buff increases the high attack damage on Legion Commander, but generally Anesix is going to be your go-to Underlord in all cases with a Legion Commander build. 
Let's talk a little bit about the items that are ideal on Legion Commander. She can hold a lot of items uh, very well. If she's snowballing and really carrying the game, Stonehall Pike or Stonehall Cloak are some of the best items since she'll be racking up a lot of kills. And the Champion Alliance modifies the bonus attack and health from those items. Other than Pike, attack speed items are generally going to be more efficient for increasing her DPS compared to attack damage items. While it is true that bonus attack damage is increased by the Champion Alliance and the Demon Alliance, she'll often have a lot of damage as is, so giving her something like Hand of Midas or Moon Shard to increase the attack speed will generally increase her DPS more than a flat attack damage bonus like, say, Crystallis. Desolator is a very strong early game item on Legion Commander since it will help her to shred through the dual target by reducing their armor, and since getting the kills is so important in the early game. Later on in the game though, Satanic is particularly effective on her since she hits very hard so the bonus lifesteal will likely fully heal her, and the bonus health is once again amplified by the Champion Alliance so it's much more effective on her than on anybody else. Let's talk a little bit about positioning. As a general rule, you want to position Legion Commander in such a way that she gets into the fight a little bit later than most of your other units. This will ensure that she does not get attacked initially by most opponents, keeping her alive longer, but also delaying her duel until a little bit later in the fight. This maximizes the chances that she'll actually be able to finish off a low health opponent during the duel window. It's also wise to place her next to some other high damage units like say Slarder or Ogre Magi here so they can focus down the same opposing unit and then maximize the chance of that dual win. Let's take a look at some examples. Here's a pretty strong early game build with Savages, Druids, and Legion Commander. She's positioned a few rows back to avoid taking initial hits and with everybody kind of positioned off to the side in this kind of angular shape, it ensures that most of your units are going to be targeting the same unit and hopefully Legion Commander gets on the same target that your Shadow Shaman and Enchantress are in order to burst that one target down and hopefully duel right as they're about to be finished off. This next formation places Legion Commander on the back line, near Chaos Knight and an Ogre Magi. Chaos Knight's high damage output and Ogre Magi's bloodlust can help Legion Commander win duels. She also counts as a knight in this build, so she'll benefit from being adjacent to other knights like Batrider and Chaos Knight. In this final build here, while this build will generally avoid stacking too many of the same alliances, this example uses four Warlocks, which I do believe is very potent with Legion Commander, especially if you have the Ace of Warlocks Disruptor. This formation places the two main melee carries, Legion Commander and Sven, tucked away back in the corners and on the back lines so that they ensure that most opponents are going to attack the initially tankier frontline units like Treant Protector, Alchemist, and Doom. That concludes this guide to my favorite Legion Commander build. I want to give a big thanks to all of my supporters who make this content possible. This Making this content is my full-time job, and I really do appreciate every little bit of support. Special thanks to my Lord Tier channel members, John Vise and Segi Fault. If you'd like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button down below. You get early access to guide videos like this, as well as other perks, so please check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.